Welcome to the StockMinter.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your StockMinter, Brian Johnson, making professional trading simple. And, boy, it's been boring. Boring, boring, boring. Two days of nowhere action. Not going anywhere. So, uh, I said in uh, my video yesterday, or in the heading of my video yesterday, it's okay to sit on your hands. It is. It's okay to do nothing in the markets. Uh, a lot of times when you try to force something and make a bad decision, that's going to cost you money. You're going to kick yourself for not having just sat out and waited. There really wasn't much to trade. It's very, very difficult trading today. So turn your attention away from the indices. Turn them towards the stock. Sometimes you find some stuff that's running pretty well. You can kind of make some money off of those. So here we have the Dow. Not really much further than where we were yesterday. Uh, still looking to get up and above this overhead trend line, channel line, as it were, resistance, and that's got to be up above 10,100. So once again, repeat the mantra. Above 10,100, really above 10,150. That's probably a safer place. More aggressive, you can get above 10,100. Just put a, a tight stop on it. Keep it below you know, 10,000 at that point. Keep a 25 to 50 point stop on it. Get uh, If you're going to get long at the 10,100 area, 10,150 is probably a little bit safer. Still looking to get above these levels here, but right now we're just moving sideways. This has, uh, um, I'm saying, below 10,000 to below 99.50 uh, is where the bo uh, bears are looking to finally drag this thing down. If they can get it below 9,900, I wouldn't see why we wouldn't retest the bottom side or come pretty close to the bottom side of this channel line again. So anything below 9,900... Um, would probably take us back towards towards this area here. So 100 points this way, or about 100 and f about 100 points this way. Either way is what we're waiting for uh, to give us a direction on the Dow and to give us a, p a potential trade. But right now, this is just kind of a symmetrical triangle that it's forming, and we. Uh, are just going to wait for it to break out before we take the next move. From a daily standpoint, we still are below this uh, trend line here. Once again, above 10,100, a little bit more of a spec play, but a 10, above 10,150, I think, is a little bit safer place to get long either place. Uh, not too bad of a trade because we would be above some potential overhead resistance, which is what we're seeing on both the daily and the 60-minute. From an NDX standpoint, down four points today, nothing. Look at this, just... <clears throat> sideways chop right here uh, staying uh, in and around the 20 and the 50 period moving averages but even they are starting to flatten out and show us nothing for potential directions looking to get back below 1740 1730 for the more conservative would probably take us back to retest this uh, line here if we can get up and over 1770 I think that'll take us back to 1780 1790 and maybe beyond I would certainly be looking at 1790 for a first target on a break over 1770 to the long side from a daily standpoint the Nasdaq just creeping its way down now kind of coming out of this overhead uh, line just ever so uh, slightly but doing it uh, here you have kind of a double doji look to it as long as it stays above the support area it may find some footing and start to push its way upwards uh, so above 1760 or so, still 1770 or so from a swing trader's perspective is your better bet to get into this thing to, if you're going to hold for a little while. From a weekly standpoint, it's only Wednesday, not going to worry about it because we're just moving sideways. SPX on, an, on a 60, <clears throat> same type of thing, waiting for a break below 1060, really 1055. We get below 1055, I think we can retest this lower area down in here. We got to get above the 1075 area. Uh, even 1080 is a little bit more, well, 1075 for the more aggressive above 1080, but then 1085 is right above us as well. That should be pretty strong so, uh, resistance on the way up. <coughs> Sorry, ultimately 1100 to 1105. That's the bigger areas of overhead resistance. Let's take a look at the daily on the SPX. Still remaining below this this channel line here waiting for a break so I'm really I'm, I'm kind of I'm neutral uh, in the short term longer term I'm still neutral to bearish so don't don't get me wrong there but in the short term here I am absolutely neutral I can see both a bear and a bull side to this market 
I can make a case for both of them, make them both pretty strong. So we have to wait for breaks below 1055, above 1075-ish to even start looking at our first trades to the long or the short side. From a weekly standpoint, just moving sideways, this giving us absolutely no direction here as to where it wants to go. Got a couple days left in the week. VIX on a daily. You can see here, same thing here, no fear. Fear's not moving at all. It uh, worked its way up to this point, and now it's it's just stuck. It's really not going anywhere. So we will uh, see if we get any kind of movement here in the next couple days. I would expect to see something in the next couple days. I do believe we're coming into a three-day weekend, so they'll want to move the markets one way or the other to prepare it for an abbreviated week uh, next week, and I believe it's also expira options expiration week. So I should check my calendar quick before I say all that, but I think it's a three-day weekend, and I think it's options expiration week uh, to make things very interesting. Uh, weekly basis, here's the VIX. Look at that little tiny candle after Wednesday. No movement whatsoever. We saw big movement three, three weeks ago, and last week we saw big movement, but nothing so far from the VIX. Apple on a 60-minute down a buck.